The Murfreesboro Fire and Rescue Department Administration Office is located at 220 Northwest Broad Street. Fire and Rescue personnel is dedicated to providing outstanding fire protection for the city of Murfreesboro. Their ultimate goal is to deliver the highest level of emergency response with the greatest margin of safety in the most fiscally responsible way. The Administration Division is responsible for day-to-day -day management and supervision of the Fire Department. Among the members of Administration is Assistant Chief Fire Marshal Ken Honeycutt. He's been a longtime member of the City of Murfreesboro team and member of the Fire and Rescue Department for over 30 years. Well, when I was a sophomore in high school, and I'm going to start a few years back, um, uh, I was able to get a job with the Rec Department. And I started over at Oakland's swimming pool in the, what we call the basket room. And uh, that's actually where my career started with the city. And I worked there, you know, each summer through high school. And after high school, I went into the military. Uh, after that, I, uh, when I got out of the military, I come back and, you know, didn't exactly know what I wanted to do. Um, so I went to work for Mr. Duffy, which was the recreation director. He hired me back. Um, and, and I worked for him uh, all during my, my uh, college days at Middle Tennessee. And you know, when I actually went to school to get a degree in that field and um, was successful with that. And after graduation, Mr. Duffy hired me full time. Um, after about a year um, uh, in, in the department, I let a good friend talk me into selling real estate instead of keeping my job with the rec department. Uh, it turned out to be a I thought a mistake at the time, but you know, as time went on, I, you know, I just, I believe that, that you're here on this earth for a reason. And, you know, I didn't know when I started that career that interest rates were going to be 21% and nobody could afford to buy a house. And by chance one day, my uh, grandparents lived down on Vine Street and I happened to be going by uh, fire department headquarters and I thought, you know, I really need to find me a job. Um, so I just happened to stop in that day, and uh, uh, and as chance would would have it, uh, a position had come available about two hours before I walked in the door. Um, so I I talked to Chief Swan, and he hired me, and that was in October of 1979. And um, I loved uh, being a firefighter. I really didn't want to get off uh, of the fire engine. And I struggled with that. I really didn't even want to drive. I just wanted to fight fire. And, um, but, you know, thinking about that, um, I decided, well, if I'm ever going to uh, do uh, any better in this department, I've got to move on. And, and so I applied for a driver position and got that. And um, after I did that for about seven years, uh, you know, I kind of realized that I wanted to be in the fire prevention side. And uh, every time a position for fire inspector would come available, I'd, I'd apply for it. And Chief Swan would say, Honeycutt, you, you don't qualify. You ain't got enough time. I said, okay, I want to let you know that that's what I want to do as a career. And after about the third time, I, I was successful at that and was promoted to fire inspector in 1986. Um, at that time, there were three of us, uh, myself, uh, Dayton Porterfield, and the former fire chief, David Baxter, were the three fire inspectors and you know the city was not all that big uh, we had territories divided up into three sections and our only function uh, was to go out and inspect uh, existing buildings and that's all we did every single day and um, uh, I did that uh, for two years and then in 1988 uh, they restructured the department and uh, they made the, this position that I'm holding today going back you know, like I say, when I started in 86, we, didn't, we weren't involved in a whole lot uh, as, as far as new construction and, and doing some of the things that we do now. Uh, we really actually got started uh, with the codes department. They invited us back in 1987. They invited us to come get involved in the review process um, to try to, to make things better. You know, you got to have education, public education, but you also got to make sure things are built, you know, for public safety. So when we got started in that, <clears throat> I think that was a, a very big uh, step forward for us. We got into the plan review process. Uh, we got involved in all that, and, and I think it's, it's paid off. Um, you can't prevent all fires, uh, but we can do the best we can and try to educate and try to build things safe. And, and this, uh, 
that part of it has really over the years exploded into uh, the way we do things and figuring fire flows and where we set hydrants and the width of the streets and how my fire engines are going to you know get inside these complexes and stuff it, it's um, uh, it's a difficult job um, but my staff uh, does an excellent job uh, with that and um, you know you look around at some of the developments we've got here in the city they're very nice uh, and they're and they're safe and we're proud of that Murfreesboro Fire and Rescue Department used funds from a FEMA assistance to firefighters grant to purchase 2,500 dual detection smoke alarms, 100 audio visual alarms, and 100 bed shakers for free distribution and installation to Murfreesboro citizens. With these resources, the MFRD created the Project SAFE program, which stands for Smoke Alarms for Everyone. Uh, back in 2000, um, you know, we decided to come up with a program that we call Project Safe. Our initial uh, uh, start of that program, we actually got the firefighters uh, on shift um, in their spare time to go around knocking on doors. Uh, people that were not home, we left flyers uh, that we would provide them with smoke detectors free of charge. Uh, that was a great success. Um, you know, we've had that program going on now since then. We still have that. Uh, last year we received a grant and we we have plenty of smoke detectors. Uh, we've also got some specialized kind of detectors where they work with a, a device that goes under a, a person that's hard of hearing. It's called a, uh, a shaker device. And what it does, it works uh, it, uh, in conjunction with the smoke detector on the wall. When it goes off, this thing really vibrates under a person's pillow that's hard of hearing and it kind of alerts them of what's going on. Uh, and we also received uh, a large quantity of what we call dual detectors. Um, they are ionization type and photoelectric type detectors. They're a combo model which uh, uh, will detect whatever type of fire you have in your house, whether it's a smoldering fire or whether it's a, a free burner. Uh, so that program continues to go. Um, we have signs out in front of uh, most of our fire stations or some of them uh, that we still have that program going on. Anybody that needs smoke detectors, uh, they, all they have to do is call us at 893-1422 uh, and we will see that they um, get what they need. In September 2007, the Murfreesboro Fire and Rescue Department moved from a Class 3 to a Class 2 fire rating. This elite category is enjoyed by less than 1% of the country's fire departments. Uh, right now, the city is a class two ISO rating. That's the insurance services uh, comes in and rates cities. Uh, a class two is is pretty rare. I think there's like uh, maybe five or less than 10 percent of the departments in the whole United States that are class two. So that's a great honor to have that. Um, you know, it it takes a lot to get to that point. Uh, and when I say that, I mean the city council, the mayor and city manager, they have supported our department and given us the equipment uh, and, and the personnel that we need to make that happen. Um, one of the, uh, or, or several of the reasons that we've got that class two, you know, when ISO comes in and evaluates the city, they look at several different things like uh, the equipment that you have, the personnel that you have, your water supply, and your communications. Um, I, you know, I, it, as we've talking a while ago uh, in reviewing plans, over the years, uh, the water supply has been a big part of that process, and we have worked very well with Murfreesboro Water and Consolidated Utility District uh, to make sure that we have the, the, the water supply, uh, the distribution of hydrants, uh, things like that that makes that happen, and they've been, we've been able to keep up with that. Uh, with the council and the city manager and the mayor, uh, you know, funding these projects and keeping up with that. So it's not something you can do and just let it go. You've got to continually keep up with that and they've, they've supported us on that. The equipment that I see that the firefighters have now today um, just makes a world of difference for them and we've been very well supported with that. 
You know, uh, early on in my career as a fire inspector, you know, you know the old saying, Rome wasn't built in a day. Well, when I first made fire inspector, I, I thought you could. Uh, it took me about two years to figure out I was not going to cure all the problems in the city. Uh, so after I learned that, I decided, okay, we're going we're gonna to do this a different way. Uh, so my philosophy has always been, you know, codes are written, but you can't always go strictly by the code. You know, it allows you to use some common sense and work with people. There are alternative, alternative ways about doing things. Uh, but I have found over the years that, that if, I'm, if I'm nice to people and, and, and try to get along with them and work with them, uh, you get a whole lot more done uh, than trying to be somebody that says, you're going to do it my way or else. You know, that typically don't work. So I think we've all been successful with that. And, you know, like I said earlier, I've been fortunate to have a great staff uh, that most time you don't have to ask them to do things they know what needs to be done. Uh, they go out and they get the job done. And, you know, that's the key, I think, uh, if you have a great staff they know what they're doing and you trust them to do what they're supposed to do. It really works well. And, and I do appreciate them. Sometimes I don't tell them enough, but um, it's made my job a whole lot easier. You know, one of the things um, that struck me, I guess, is the most important part of this job and, and uh, the special events team is a big part of that, was the education part. You know, a lot of people don't realize that Tennessee usually ranks in the top three in fire deaths every single year. Um, and that's not good. And that's one of the reasons I thought that it was important to have, uh, you know, the public education. My special events team, not to say mine, but the departments, they do an outstanding job. They love doing it. Um, and they do a great job. Um, I think it's been good for the city, um, you know, and there's other ways that, that we, we do this. Uh, last year, I was looking at our fire, uh, annual fire report, you know, and, and, and they educated a little more than 29,000 kids and adults last year. That's a lot of people. Uh, hopefully they go back and, and tell their family members and friends about some of the things that they learned. And, um, you know, I think it's paid off. My name is Tracy Summer. I'm an assistant fire marshal with Murfreesboro Fire and Rescue. I'm also the coordinator for the Fire and Rescue Department's special events team. Uh, earlier this year, we, uh, with Chief Gaines and Fire Marshal Honeycutt, helped us to uh, come up with an idea and implement a plan to kind of give back to the community. And this kind of coincides with the city's service excellence program. Um, and and this, is, this is the way that we give back to the community and support the community that, that we already work for and that we already serve. Uh, we set up at different events. I think we had 12 different events this year that we went to, uh, such as the uh, Child Advocacy Center's Duck Derby. That was our very first event. Uh, Uncle Dave Making Days, we've been to Cannonsburg several times for, for different events. Uh, just different venues throughout the city. Um, and it's, it's a way for us to, uh, the special events team kind of has a twofold process or, or twofold purpose. Uh, the first one is to is to educate the public about fire safety. Uh, that is our main goal. And a, a benefit of, of that as well is, is for us to be able to engage and interact with the community. Uh, for to you know anytime you want to get your message across to people you have to befriend them. You have to let them know why you're there and and it just makes things go so much more smoothly if you can do that. Um, and, and and we have we have succeeded in that. Uh, we have uh, given out several fire prevention supplies and tips and uh, made several contacts for our Project SAFE program. We've been able to go and install different smoke detectors uh, for people that have just come up and, and, and asked. And it's, it's really a way for us to get our message across to the city in, in a different way. But the venues that we've been involved with, we've received very encouraging, positive feedback. Uh, just thankful for, for the help. Uh, for example, the, the very first event that we did with the uh, Duck Derby. Um, you know, we were there, number one, we were there to promote 
our, our message, which was fire safety. Uh, but we're also there to just, just to help, just to be a part of the community uh, and everything from uh, providing uh, limited uh, medical aid on, on the site that we were there uh, to being in the river and helping corral all the ducks in the river. You know, uh, we go to help in the venues that we're at. Uh, and, and, and people were very grateful for that. You know, the ones that I've talked to, the organizers from different events, uh, they were very grateful for that. The, the team that we have on the, our the, the set up for the special events um, are some of the people in the department that are always there that go above and beyond. Uh, they go a step further. Uh, they love people, they love to talk to people, they love to engage people and, and just uh, see how they can help. Uh, and, and, and it's not only me, uh, it's, uh, it's, it's the whole team that feels that way. Uh, we have a great group of people on the team and it wouldn't be what it was if it weren't for the people that we have on the team. Uh, it's, it's not for everybody, it involves a lot of after hours work. Having a presence at the different venues throughout the city, it lets the public know that you know we are there for help, not only in an emergency, but if you have questions or uh, if you need uh, suggestions on how to protect your, yourself, your home, or your loved ones from from the from the fire uh, the effects of fires. Uh, you know we want people to see us and, and be accessible to people, not only in times of an emergency. Uh, we like to be visible and, and like, like to be seen as, as community friends and helpers because you know the very purpose of, the very purpose of our existence as a department as well as the special events team is to serve the citizens of Murfreesboro and we're just looking for different avenues to, to accomplish that mission. When we first came up with the concept of the special events team, we, we have a very large number of people on the team uh, because of the way that our department operates. We operate on shifts, on 24-hour shifts. Uh, so any one venue that we have, one shift is going to be working. And we have about 10 or 12 people per shift. Uh, so for any one event, we're going to have up to 24 people available. Now, the way we selected them, we just uh, kind of pitched the idea to our department. Uh, and, and ask them, you know, is this something you would care to uh, be a part of? Is this something you believe in? And, you know, uh, and, and the qualifications that we uh, set forth initially were, you know, to be energetic and engaging and, and pleasant, and just being able to get along with people and answer questions and uh, promote our message. Um, and we've had a huge success with that. Um, our first event was the Duck Derby. Um, we helped actually in the river corralling ducks and, and we handed that material to all the, the public that was there. Uh, the thing I remember most about that event um, and the positive feedback from it was there was actually a child there that had a seizure and we were there close and we were there to that child first and actually called EMS. Uh, we got a lot of positive feedback from that. We actually have a tent um, that we got that's very, very nice. Um, we actually set that up. It takes us about 30 minutes to get everything set up. We have a board that has pictures on it of uh, stuff that we do throughout the year, fires, fire prevention, uh, fire prevention teams on there. Uh, we set that up and have table, tables in there. We have fire helmets and pencils, rulers, pamphlets for fire safety, stuff for the kids. Um, the picture board is probably one of the th parents actually, it draws them, they have lots of questions about it, which is good, because we can answer, teach them a little bit about fire safety, uh, maybe, you know, prevent an injury or even save a life, you know, with them asking questions and stuff like that. But that's pretty much the setup. And then while we're there, we, we'll get helmets and we'll, we'll walk around, hand out helmets to the kids. It's, it's awesome seeing the kids, they, they love those fire helmets. And we also have Freddie the fire truck was at one event and they love Freddie. So that's fun. Um, I love interacting with and teaching the public. Um, the public's really what our job is all about. Um, teaching them fire safety, um, usually as firefighters we see people in their worst times. With the special events team it gives us a chance to be in a more relaxed atmosphere with them, um, teach them about fire safety like I said earlier. You know if we can prevent injury or even save a life it's, it's really worth it. I think when people see us out like this, like I said, you know usually they see us when they need help. Um, when they see us out in these venues and stuff they see familiar faces and then I actually had a lady that said something to me. We went to her house on a first responder call and she recognized me from being, I think it was the Duck Derby, she said, that she saw us there and she remember us, handed her kids the fire helmets and 
just that she even remembered us being there was kind of cool. It's just really, it's a lot of fun uh, getting out in the public, uh, getting with the community, getting to talk to kids, the parents, uh, teaching them about fire safety, showing them the pictures on our board that we got in our tent uh, of what we've done in the past, calls we've been on, training we do. Uh, there's a lot of stuff that we do that the community isn't aware of. Uh, they may not know about us running medical calls, wrecks, just, just different things we do. And when we are at these events, we're able to have more face time with the public and, and teach them all the stuff we do. Uh, and I just like being with the public. I like talking to people, getting to know people. Usually the first words that are out of their mouth are stop, drop, and roll. So, I mean, they know that and they know get out, stay low. You know, they know all the basics and they, and they tell us that whenever they come up. Uh, they'll see all the, the stuff we got, the rulers and things, and you know, it's stuff they've gotten from school, and so that, you know, they'll feed, give us that feedback. Uncle Dave making days, uh, that was a big event, three day event, so it was a long one, a lot of people. There was some storms coming through, and they come to us to, you know, hey, you know, if it does get bad weather, do y'all mind helping us, you know, get people to go to, you know, where they need to go, get out and stuff. So uh, just we're there to help. If they need something, come and ask. We're there to help them. If anybody would be interested in having this uh, Mercer Fire and Rescue special events team at their venues, uh, we would we welcome that. We would love to be a part of that. Call us at 893-1422.